Hello world and welcome back to my channel Sunshine in my code. My name is Wahudum Matlapeng and in today's video, the first day video I've done without makeup, I'm going to be doing a makeup and data structures tutorial. So I'm going to talk about data structures, I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of data structures and how they're used, where they're used and what data structures are and then at the same time I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial. So more data structures than makeup but yeah let's get into it as i apply my concealer to my eyelids because i'm starting with my eyes first we're going to talk about what data structures are and how are they different from data types and algorithms right so data types are data type is how you store a specific data like a username you would probably put it in a string an algorithm is sort of like a way, like a sequence of instructions for processing information and then giving some kind of output. So it's a set of steps, right? So it's like a mostly mathematical formulas for you doing something with data. And then data types are how you store a collection of data. So how you organize data in such a way that it's most efficient depending on what operations you're gonna perform on it. So we characterize a data structure by knowing that you have multiple, like a large collection of data and you're gonna perform certain operations over that data. That's how you know. Um, I've also prime and prepped my skin. I feel like I had to do it before the tutorial because that's what makeup artists say. Just wanted to throw that in there. So the example we're gonna use in this video is that of a stock file. And the reason for that, um, actually, what is a stock file? A stock file is a group of people who at every month kind of come together and they group money together and they invest that money and then when someone has like an event or a wedding a funeral and then the stock fell will kind of take money from the money they pull together and give to that like a bit of that money like maybe like they could agree on like ten thousand to give to who and the member of the stock fell who has an event or, and so certain things you want to do when your stock fell, like your data structure, let's say you're storing the members by their name and their amount they can collect. Certain things you'd want to do is go to every stock file member and collect all this money. Maybe you're looking for a specific stock file member. So there's a bunch of operations we can perform over this data set, right? That is members of our stock file. I'm now putting on some, a bit of concealer over my eyes so that when I put on my eye makeup, it pops. <laughs> So the first data structure we're going to look at is a list and how a list works is you have each member of your stock file and they're right next to each other right so they're going to live right next to each other and so what's happening in memory when you create a list is that it does something like this right this is what your list looks like you have each member of the stock file and they're all right next to each other like they can be ordered or unordered but in memory you get a memory address for each data that you're storing and they're right next to each other and this is great right so because at any so let's say for instance this is the beginning of our list and we have this amount of members in our stock file and then this house will be the house that says this is the end right so these are the pretending these are houses <laughs> and these are members of your stock file right so if you want to go to member number one, you know it's this one. If you want to go to member number two, you know it's this one. And then you can go all the way and then you get here and it's the end of the stock file and you've collected all the money for that stock file. So that's really great because you can go to member number three, you can go to member number four. That's one of the good things about lists is that you have random access to users and that really helps with doing stuff like you can collect money from every second member of your stock file you can collect money in reverse you can collect money from the first five and only that so those operations are really good for your stock file but now let's say you know your stock file is popping people realize that it's really working out you guys have like a great treasurer and people want to join your stock file what does a list do when you know, there's a new data, data that needs to be stored into it. What it's gonna do, it's gonna go, hey, so I have a new person joining the stock file, but that means I don't have room to denote the end of the list. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take a different palette and it's gonna put new members of your stock file into this palette, right? So it's gonna actually create another list and move everyone, relocate them to this palette. And then this palette has more space, right? You can store a few more people, which is great. But if there's a new member in your stock file every month, 
you can already see how this is going to go wrong <laughs> right so it means that everyone will have to relocate every month every time there's a new member in their stock file so lists get recreated and this is what we mean when we say lists are immutable is that we're not changing the amount the list we're not moving that we're not moving this pointer that denotes the end of the list to a different point we're actually creating a new list and that's not what you want that's not really efficient if you have a stock file where no one will be joining that's great but if you have a stock file where people will always be joining then you might wanna it's not gonna work so the next data structure is a linked list right so you kind of decided that moving everyone around every month is not a good idea and you're tired of changing makeup patterns. so this one says hey you know people in stock files tend to know each other like you know I don't like the I don't have to be the only person who knows everyone and goes to everyone what if I only kept track of the first person in the in the stock film and that person has track of the next person and that person can keep track of the next person and that person can keep track of the next person you see where this is going right right so that's how linked list works so there's this data structure that we use it's mostly called a node a lot of the time just for convention to make it more readable we call it a node but you can you can pretty much call it anything right so you have a node and what a node allows you to do so you create an a class called node and then in that class you can store whatever value you want to store and in the case of our stock file we would want to store the house or the name of the house and then the amount that they contribute monthly then you keep track of their next right and the next value in this case is the next person in the stock file that they keep track of and that's what your node looks like right now you don't have to worry if they're next to each other right you don't have to have a palette you can just keep little nodes that are moving around and they each know where the next one is doesn't matter where which one is stored what this means is that if you run out of space in this palette you can easily make a node that points to another member of the stock file who is in this palette right so now they don't have to be into they don't have to be one after the other and so one of the drawbacks of linked lists is that you can't randomly access right you only know the first person in that stock file you right you can't get the sixth person you can't get the third person the next data structure is a queue and a good way to think about queues is that you have a queue of customers right so what happens when customers think of the customers as the members of your stock file when they're going through a line what happens in a queue is that you keep track of the first person and the last person and then if you're doing an operation you would start with the first person if you're adding a member to a stock file you would go to the last person and that's how queues work you keep track of the top value and the bottom value i'm gonna go in with my transition color now i only have one brush so i just have to wipe it off a little bit i'm actually gonna go with this transition color because i like it better and yeah so the next data structure is a stack and you can think of a stack as a stack of dishes right and how a stack works is you have oh my gosh this color's not coming out you have the top of the collection right you have the top of the stock file and when you add someone you add them they become the first member in the stock file and then when you remove someone from the stock file when you go to, or when you go to collect money you start with that person right you start collecting money from that person and i guess like from a treasurer's perspective it makes sense like if someone's new you want to make sure they're paying their dues first yeah so you just remember that when you add members to a stack you add them to the top when you when you go through you start from the top unlike a queue where when you add you add to the bottom or the last and then when you when you remove or when you start collecting funds you start with the one who is first and that's the difference between a stack and a queue I start putting on my foundation because i'm literally just not putting on makeup right now um so how a tree tree data structure we're talking about trees <laughs> works is that you have a node that is the middle node right and then that middle node 
has nodes that are below it and nodes that are above it right so if there's things below you there's things above you and then in every little other group of nodes there's another node that's the middle and that middle node has nodes above it and nodes below it because that's how middles work and in let's say for instance in your your stock file right you have a stock file of 26 members let's just say for this example and each member of your stock file is you know has like a name and that name is orderly the letters of the alphabet and then you know that member n has members who are below them and above them and you'll see that member n if it's n and then m um from everything from m that side is above the n and then everything from the letter before n like a's and b's are below it so right you can put everything to everything that's below n and the letter that occurs first before n and the letters of the alphabet to the left of the node and to the left of n and everything that's above n to the right of n right so then what you see is that if you do that recursively you're going to build up a tree that hierarchically stores information right i don't have to go through every letter in the alphabet i just only have to go through the letters that are you know in range of the letter i have right and that's really great that's really helpful to kind of trim down um the the search right so it's not a base thing where i have to go through everyone i can actually just go through a lot less so now i've put on a little bit of concealer just a little bit to hide my eye bags from nights of writing code and yeah so that's now the next data structure the last data structure we're actually going to talk about is graphs so we've made the assumption all along that each person would be in one stock file that they would you know somehow data would be stored hierarchically and that the stock file would grow and that's all great but in a lot of instances most people actually belong to more than one stock file if you have more than one stock file and th so that means essentially each person has their own little connections right each person isn't tied to you know a single stock file so each person can form or make multiple connections and you don't know how many stock files each person is in so you don't want to make the assumption that people have you know stock for one stock for two stock for three so what you do is you just keep a list of their friends right and graphs are actually used practically in a lot of social networks if you see a lot of graphing to show how people are interconnected you see a lot of graphs so now i have done my eyebrows sneak that into the tutorial and i'm going to do my lips doing my lips is always fun because i like mixing and combining colors and is this the orange is this the color i want you and now i put on setting spray Yeah, that is it. That is the end of the tutorial. I now look like what I look like at the beginning of my videos. Uh, yeah, my name is Tawakhudi Mumatlapeng and I'm so glad we can do this and have fun and put on makeup while we talk about code. It's really cool. <laughs> Remember to subscribe to start shine in my code. And yeah, hopefully I can do more stuff like this. And leave a comment below if you really enjoyed this and you thought it was just fun and i might do more videos like this might do something kudo next time